All right, let's, uh, let's write our equation that we've been using here on the board. Two moles of methanol. We know that reacts with three moles of oxygen. And that goes to two moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water. And let's think back to the reaction. You know, I took some of this methanol, I stuck it in a jug, mixed it up, opened it up to the atmosphere, held a uh, lit splint next to it, and there was a reaction that occurred. And during that reaction, pretty much all of the methanol was burned up. Was all of the oxygen in the atmosphere used up? Well, of course not. Well, you know, we're still here, we're still breathing in O2 and alive. And the reason why I point this out is because sometimes when we're studying chemical reactions, it is the case that one of the reactants gets completely used up and some of the other reactant is left over and still available to, to react. And the, the reactant that gets used up, we actually call that the limiting reagent, or the limiting reactant. Reagent and reactant, those are, those are essentially synonymous. So our limiting reagent in a chemical reaction is going to be one that gets com completely used up. So what happens is it limits how, how much of the reaction we see. You know, I, did, I only used a little bit of methanol, and I did that on purpose. I didn't want to use a whole lot of methanol because I didn't want the whole room to go up in flames. And that's because the amount of methanol that's used in that case is going to limit how much of the reaction can go. There's plenty of oxygen around to burn stuff, plenty of it. So we want to be able to do the reaction safely. We limit the reaction and how much of the explosion we get by adding just a very small amount of methanol. The reactant that ends up being left over after the reaction's done is called the reagent in excess. There's more of it around. And these ideas, actually, they they complicate these stoichiometry problems a little bit. Let me give you an example. I'm on PowerPoint slide 8, and I'm looking at the problem down below. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what? Let's suppose that I, in a, in a sealed flask, I mix together 90 grams of methanol and 100 grams of oxygen and I allow this to completely react. Are these perfectly balanced? Pro no, probably not. There's only, you know, there's only one ratio of masses that's going to be a perfect balance. So this completely reacts with this. In almost all cases, when you mix reactants together, there's going to be something that's left over. There's going to be a reagent that's in excess. There's going to be a reagent that's limiting. So let, we don't know in this case, because we're just looking at, we're looking at grams, we have no idea, but we're going to say we're going to mix 90 grams of the methanol with 100 grams of the oxygen. The question is, how much carbon dioxide will be produced if this stuff reacts as far as it can go? And I'll show you the way that we'll, that we'll think this through. So right now, I need to identify which of these reagents is in excess, which of these reagents is limiting. I'll just show you the way that I do it. I'm going to say, okay, I've got, what did I say, 90 grams of this, 90 grams of methanol, and let's see, I've got 100 grams of oxygen. And I just want to read the question to make sure I'm going to ask this, answer this correctly. It's asking us which reagent is in excess, which is the limiting reagent, and how much carbon dioxide could be produced in this reaction. So I'm really focusing in on part C because by answering part C, I'll be able to answer parts A and B. So in other words, I'm going to see how much carbon dioxide can be produced if all of this reacts. And then I'm going to find out how much carbon dioxide can be produced if all of this reacts. Let's just do that see what happens. Okay. 90 grams of methanol. It, you can verify this, but there are 32 grams of methanol in every one mole 
of methanol. Why did I do this? Because I need to relate methanol to carbon dioxide, and the only way I can relate these two numbers is by converting this gram into a number or a mole. Well, that's pretty easy. It's, it's, it's one to one. I'll just do the step here. Two moles of methanol produces two moles of carbon dioxide if all of this reacts. So basically, it's 90 divided by 32. That's about 3, a little less than 3, I think. Let's see, 90 divided by 32. 90 divided by 32 times 2 divided by 2. So I'm getting 2.81. That's moles of CO2 produced. So there we have it. We know if all of this methanol reacts, how many moles of carbon dioxide can be produced? Let's do the same trick here for oxygen. Let's imagine all the oxygen in the container gets, gets consumed. Well, I need to convert this to a number so I can relate this number to this number. And it turns out, you might remember, there's 32 grams of oxygen in one mole of oxygen, 16 times 2. Well, let's see, for every three moles of oxygen, we'll produce two moles of carbon dioxide. And now I can do the math. 100 divided by 32 times 2 divided by 3. It's going to be a little less, I'm guessing. 100 divided by 32 times 2 divided by 3, 2.08 moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, I'm going to look at this and I see that if, now again, I, I've mixed 90 grams of methanol and 100 grams of oxygen. We mix it together. If all 90 grams of this react, I should be able to get 2.8 moles of carbon dioxide. If all 100 grams of oxygen react, I should only be able to get 2.1 gram, excuse me, 2.1 moles of carbon dioxide. Notice, it is the oxygen that is limiting how much carbon dioxide can be produced. Therefore, the limiting reagent in this case, which limits how much carbon dioxide can be produced, is going to be the oxygen. The reagent in excess is the methanol, and the amount of carbon dioxide that's going to be produced is 2.08 moles, which I can convert that to grams by multiplying this by 44 grams per mole, which is about 88 grams, correct? Yeah, 44 times 2 is about 88. Now, I have to be careful here because you're often going to see problems in the text or on a, on a test worded in the following way. 90 grams of methanol and 100 grams of oxygen are mixed and sealed in a flask and allowed to completely combust. What is the maximum amount of carbon dioxide that can be produced? And then you run through these problems and you're thinking the maximum amount and you're comparing these two and you're saying, well, clearly 2.8 is a bigger number than 2.1, so the maximum amount that can be produced is 2.8 moles. And you'd be wrong because the maximum amount that can be produced is limited by the limiting reagent. And so if I take 90 grams of methanol, seal it in a flask with 100 grams of oxygen, allow that to completely combust, because oxygen in this case limits the amount of carbon dioxide that can be produced, the maximum amount of carbon dioxide that can be produced is about 2.1 moles.